Question 4. A small stone is projected with speed 65 meters per second from a point O at the top of a vertical cliff. Point O is 70 meters vertically above the point N. Point N is on horizontal ground. The stone is projected at an angle of alpha above the horizontal, where tan alpha is equal to 5 twelfths. The stone hits the ground at the point A, as shown in figure 3. The stone is modelled as a particle moving freely under gravity. The acceleration due to gravity is modelled as having a magnitude of 10 metres per second squared. Using the model, part A, find the time taken for the stone to travel from O to A. OK, right. Well, the first thing I want to do here is I'm going to look at this tan alpha, which is 5 over 12. Tan, remember, is opposite over adjacent. And I just so happen to know that 5, 12, 13 is a Pythagorean triple. So the hypotenuse of this right angled triangle would be 13. And so I'm going to start by just writing down my sine alpha and cos alpha. And remember, mechanics questions, they will commonly use angles that involve Pythagorean triples. These can always be found on a calculator in the question, if you wish. This is just something I like to do. OK, so let's look at take the time it takes. Well, I'm going to look then at the time it takes to fall this 70 metres. So I'm going to look up and down. And for this question, I'm going to take up to be positive to start with. I'd normally do like to take up to be positive, as that's where the stone is being projected. The only thing I need to be careful when choosing the direction is that I then use the correct sign when I find my values in SUVAT. And so I have a starting point of O, this means my displacement of my particle is going to be negative 70 because I'm taking up to be positive. My initial speed is this component here, which is 65 sine alpha. So it's the vertical component, so 65 sine alpha. I don't know the speed at which it's going to hit the ground. I know acceleration due to gravity is modeled as having a magnitude of 10, and that again is acting downwards and t is the value that I want to find. So I have s, u, a and t. This is my s equals ut plus half a t squared SUVAT equation, which is in your formula booklet. Substituting my values, that gives me minus 70. ut sine alpha is 5 thirteenths, so 65 times 5 thirteenths is 25 t. Half of a is minus 5 and then I have t squared. This quadratic, thankfully, can be rearranged and divided by 5 quite nicely. So if we do that, if we take the t squared and the 25t, so add 5t squared, subtract 25t, and divide the whole thing through by 5, I get t squared minus 5t minus 14 is 0, which factorizes nicely to give me t minus 7 and t plus 2. This would give me two values of t, 7 or minus 2. Of course, negative values are not going to work when we're talking about time. And so the time I'm interested in is this 7 seconds. Of course, at this point here, you could have used the quadratic equation on your calculator and you would still have gotten the values of 7 and minus 2. Part B, find the speed of the stone at the instant just before it hits the ground. Now, there is a common mistake students make here on this question in that they attempt to find the vertical speed at the point when the stone hits the ground. And we do need to find that. However, if we just have a quick sketch here. Imagine this line here I'm calling capital V is the speed at which the particle hits the floor. At the point it hits the floor, it has a horizontal component of velocity and a vertical component of velocity. And I need both of these to be able to find the final velocity with which it hits the floor. Thankfully, in projectile questions, because we have zero acceleration acting in the horizontal plane, the horizontal speed is constant throughout. So the horizontal component of speed here is 65 cos alpha. Cos alpha is 12 thirteenths. And so 65 times 12 thirteenths is 60. So my constant horizontal component is 60. I can find 
the vertical component by looking again at Suvat. And since we're going down, let's take downwards to be positive this time. And so we know now our initial speed to be negative 65 sine alpha because that initial speed is upwards and I'm taking down to be positive this time. V is what I want to find, which is the speed or the vertical component of speed with which it hits the ground. Acceleration due to gravity is 10. And again, this is positive because downwards is positive this time. And we've calculated that it takes seven seconds to get from O to A. This gives me V is equal to U plus AT. And so substituting in my values, V is equal to 65 sine alpha, as we saw previously, it's the same as 25. This is negative in this case. And then 80, seven times 10 is 70. This gives me a vertical component of velocity of 45, which means if we go back to our original diagram, I have 60 working horizontally, 45 working vertically, so the speed with which it hits the ground is the magnitude of those, which is the square root of 60 squared plus 45 squared, which evaluates to 75, and this is meters per second. One limitation of the model is that it ignores air resistance. Part C, state one other limitation of the model that could affect the reliability of your answers. And so typically with these questions, you want to go for something that has been named in the question. I would choose this nice thing in bold. Acceleration due to gravity is mold, modeled as magnitude 10. We know that this is not the most precise measurement. We know that acceleration due to gravity could be more accurate. Other acceptable answers involve the fact that it's been modeled as a particle. If it wasn't a particle, then it could spin and turn and all sorts of wonderful things. But sticking with the simplest answer here, this acceleration due to gravity could certainly be more accurate.